Hello, I'm Daniela. This is episode 16 of Historical Paranormal. In this week's episode, we'll look at the urban legend and origins of the Melon Head children. Since the 1960s and 70s, in the forest of the suburban Midwest and Northeast of the states of Connecticut, Ohio, and Michigan, there have been tales of strange humanoids known as the Melon Heads. The Melon Head children are said to be completely bald, possess large bulbous melon-shaped heads, deformed arms and legs, and sharp dagger-like teeth with luminous red eyes. Their origin story differs by state. In Michigan, much of the story and sightings surrounds the felt mansion near Saugatuck in Holland, Michigan. It is believed there was once an insane asylum not too far from the mansion. A family gave birth to kids who suffered from the deformity hydrocephalus, which is excessive cerebral spinal fluid to the brain. They shipped their children off to the old junction insane asylum. The kids were physically and emotionally tormented until they were released into the woods to fend for themselves. In some versions of the tale, the kids conspired in escape after learning that soon the asylum would shut down. They escaped the hospital and murdered the mad scientists who had been experimenting on them and fled into the woods with his body. They had lost their sense of humanity and feasted on the doctor's flesh, scattering his bones around a deserted mansion tucked away in the forest. Others believe they lived in the felt mansion itself and mysteriously fled into an underground cave. An even darker theory to their residence in the mansion was that they were victims of abuse by the doctor and eventually rose up and killed him and left pieces of his body strewn throughout the mansion before fleeing. In Ohio, in the Kirtland area not too far from Cleveland, it is thought that the kids were in an orphanage rather than an insane asylum and were experimented on by a cruel doctor named Dr. Crow. He caused their hair to fall off their bodies and to mutate by injecting more fluid into their heads to grow the size of their heads, causing mental retardation and insanity. Like the Michigan origin, they took a stand and murdered the doctor, set fire to the orphanage, and lived a feral life in the woods, resorting to cannibalism. In other versions of the story, Dr. Crow was not cruel at all, but loving and shielded the children from a cruel world that would reject them for their deformity. Once he passed away, they went insane, burned the property down, and wandered into the woods, enraged and confused, killing anyone they crossed paths with. Some missing people and livestock in the area were blamed on the melon heads. It is thought they kept their generations going through incest. In southwest Connecticut, near Fairfield and New Haven County, like Michigan, it was thought that they once were patients in an insane asylum. In the 1960s, a fire destroyed the asylum and the patient's deformities resulting from trying to survive in the woods, incest, and cannibalism. Others think that the legends date back to colonial times with the Shelton Trumbull family tree after which two Connecticut towns are named after. The Shelton Trumbull clan was exiled by the charge of witchcraft, and their only chance of survival was to seek shelter in the woods. It is thought that disfigurement was attributed to inbreeding and cannibalism, and that rural, dusty, one-lane roads in the region are their territory. Some modern tales are that some drivers have claimed to see these melon-headed people while passing the area. Some teenagers who've wandered to the Felt Mansion in Ohio have claimed to see the melon heads. Some explanations for where these stories come from are According to the Allegan County Historical Society, the alleged insane asylum never existed. And there's always been tales that deformed rural people living as outcasts in the backwoods. Could this be where people contrive such tales? There's also a group known as the Melungian people who were stigmatized at one time and lived isolated in the forest. They were a multiracial group of people that were the result of European outcasts, former slaves, and Native Americans mixing together, and perhaps the name Melungian became melon heads, and people became creatures in urban legends. Regardless of where the melon head children's stories result from, the tales will continue to pervade U.S. urban legends and history. Thank you for watching this week's episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. For more historical paranormal events, you can check out the historical paranormal events playlist or website, as well as the urban legends playlist on this channel or my main channel, Dazzling One. Thank you for listening.